Welcome everybody to the night of the cage. It's GCW Lockdown. It is back and we have a very, very exciting match card ahead of us here tonight. And of course, for the first time ever, we're going to be having matches in our brand new GCW Lockdown structure. I'm so excited to see uh, how this structure will be here in action in GCW. And we're going to be starting off the show with a wild one. We're going to be having the Cruiserweight Championship match. Five-way elimination. And I'm so, so excited for this one. And ladies and gentlemen, here comes the Cruiserweight Champion. Here comes the new Cruiserweight Champion in Will Ospreay, who was able to get the championship back at GCW Money in the Bank from John Morrison in an amazing, amazing match. And now Ospreay is walking into lockdown, having to put his championship on the line, not only in a cage, but he has four other competitors join him in this cage very very high stakes for Will Ospreay here tonight in his first Cruiserweight Championship title defense and here comes the former GCW Cruiserweight Champion here comes John Morrison and of course Morrison was very very upset with how his uh, cruiserweight championship run went losing the belt back to Will Ospreay in the first title defense and tonight Morrison is looking to reclaim the championship once again and I think tonight actually John Morrison has quite an advantage because of his parkour background he's going to be able to climb all around that cage and it seems like he's going to demonstrate that already now Morrison up there in no time on top of the cage and a brand new signing to GCW in efforts to build up our cruiserweight division we have signed Grand Metalik who's going to be brought here to the ring by the Lucha House Party and I'm very excited to see how Metal League does here tonight in his very first GCW match ever. And also a shot at the Cruiserweight Championship has this man Ricochet who made his return at GCW Money in the Bank hit that 630 off the ladder onto the Hardys helping his brother Cedric Alexander out and tonight Ricochet will go into business for himself by trying to become the GCW Cruiserweight Champion. And here comes a new signee that everyone is very, very excited about. We have seen him show up at GCW Money in the Bank. It's the legend, it's Jushin Thunder Liger making his way to GCW all the way from Japan. We were so excited to see him at Money in the Bank. And tonight, he's going to be having his very first match as well here in GCW. So, both Metalik and Liger will have their first GCW match ever. And what a way to make your GCW in-ring debut would be uh, with uh, walking out the Cruiserweight Championship, uh, Champion. I mean, I'm super excited to see Liger here in action in GCW. And now it seems like we're getting ready to get things started. Earl Hefner closed the door. The cage is all locked and I think we're ready to go. Cruiserweight Championship match is on its way, but oh, we forgot about John Morrison and a huge dive off the cage to start things off, taking everybody out. What a smart move by Morrison. I totally forgot him being on top of that cage. And now he's going after the Cruiserweight Champion, lifting him up into power bump position. And oh my God, straight into the cage. 
Morrison starting off the match in a huge way. Liger suplex, but oh, Morrison lands on his feet. Going for the Shining Wizard. Liger ducks. There comes Metalik with a very nice Hurricane Rana. There comes Ricochet kick, but Metalik out of the way. Now Metalik goes running. Going to show us some of his rope. Oh my god, Ricochet catches him on the top rope and drop kicks him right into the metal cage. And now Liger here in the ring going after Ricochet who just took out Grand Metal League. And now Liger may be thinking Brain Buster but Ricochet landing on his feet. Now taking up Liger going for the kick to the head. Liger ducks and now Liger with the Dragon Suplex drops a Ricochet right on the top of his neck. And there comes John Morrison from behind. And now holding Liger by the horn so really not necessary here by Morrison. Sending him into the uh, corner. There he comes, but now Liger got the boot up. And now Jushin Thunder Liger is going onto the top rope. But Morrison saw that, runs up, going for a Spanish fly from the top rope. But Liger breaks out, and oh my god, the huge lariat turns Morrison inside out from the top rope. What a counter by Jushin Thunder Liger avoiding the Spanish fly by Morrison. Nicely, nicely done. But there's Osprey coming from behind and a huge drop kick to the neck. And now the Cruiserweight Champion is in the match. And now it's Osprey and Ricochet. There we go. Osprey bounces off of Ricochet. Uh, Ricochet into the gear and misses. Hidden blade, no. Ricochet with the boot going into the ropes. No, hook kick by Osprey. Hook kick, and now he. Oh no, going for that for that storm breaker. We have seen him put Morrison away with, but Ricochet lands on his feet and a super kick right to the face of Osprey. And now what is Ricochet thinking? Maybe he's gonna go for that 6:30 splash to eliminate the cruiserweight champion. But oh no, Morrison. Now Morrison's sending him kind of into the cage. But oh my god, what an Angel Geary. Ricochet swinging off the cage and now he's climbing up the cage. What does he have in mind? Going for a cross body. But oh my god, Morrison turns it into a moonsault press into the cover. And he has eliminated Ricochet. What a counter by John Morrison. Turning that cross body into a moon salt press, putting away Ricochet. And now he's going right after Liger. Uppercut here. And now, yeah, Ricochet is being led out by Earl Hefner, but there comes Grand Metal League. Goes into the ropes. Morrison catches him though, and oh my god. What a terrible landing for Grand Metal League. But there comes Lyo with the rolling kick right to the head of Morrison. And now what is Liger thinking? I think he has a Liger bomb in mind. And that would be it. Going for the Liger bomb. Liger bomb now Morrison. Able to avoid it. Going for the springboard. Into gear. Oh my god. Liger with the palm strike right to the throat. Taking out Morrison. And now there's Grand Metal League. What is he thinking? Going for the Hurricane Rod over the top rope into the cage. My god. What a maneuver by Grand Metal League. And now Metal League is in the ring. But Osprey, oh my god, he didn't play. Metal League had no idea Osprey was right behind him. And now Osprey is offering up Metal League to Liger. Who just puts him up now. Going for the Liger. Bomb. And now into the cover. One, two, three. Metal League eliminated by Jushin Thunder Liger. But that was heavily, heavily um, supported by Will Ospreay. Who just knocked out Grand Metal League with that hidden blade. And I think now we're going to get Liger and Osprey. But oh no, They're Lindsay Dorado and oh, Kalisto, when, when Earl Hefner was letting out uh, Metal League out of the cage, they stormed in. 
how bitter, oh my god. A stunner to Liger by, by, by Dorado. And now, uh, what, what, what is Kalisto doing? I, th I think he's going to go for the Salida del Sol, oh my god. This was very, very unnecessary here, I think, from the Lucha House Party, but they wanted to see a Metalik go home with the belt, of course, and now they're going home without, without it anyway. But, oh no, Morrison, who was on the outside, now is, can just pick up the pieces here. Morrison, what is he going for? You Shining Wizard taking out Liger. And Osprey just trying to get back to his feet. Morrison going for another shining version. Oh my god! Spanish fly! Desperation counter by Osprey. And Osprey now has to get up, has to follow up on Morrison. And I think he just has that in mind. Hidden blade! Hidden blade! Morrison ducks! And oh, Osprey flies right into a Liger Bomb, Liger Bomb, Liger Bomb onto Morrison, onto Morrison. Now Liger picking up, picking up Morrison, going for the Brain Buster, drops him right on his head. Vertical drop, Brain Buster into the cover, but oh no, Morrison kicks out at two. My God, how did Morrison kick out of that? And now Liger. Looking up to the crowd, and yeah, I think he's going to go for another palm strike here to Morrison. Going into the ropes, but Morrison is back up as well. Palm strike, but oh no, Morrison counters it into a Spanish fly, but from behind, oh, spray! Oh my god, hidden blade now connects. Going up for the, for the storm driver, no, Morrison counters, oh, flapjack. Counter after counter here, and now Morrison thinking Moonlight Drive onto Liger. Liger gets out of it, going for the Lariat. Morrison ducks dead. Now picking up Liger, putting him into the cage. What is this all about? Liger hanging between the cage and the and the ropes. Morrison double foot stomp, taking out Liger, who's hanging. Hanging from the cage now. And now Morrison back into the ring. Now going to go after Osprey. Oh, super kick. Super kick by Osprey. And now Osprey going for the Poison Rana. Spikes him on his head. And Liger back up from the cage. Diving headbutt from the cage by Jushin Liger. Liger now picking him up. Of course Liger is exhausted. But he's doing it. Liger bomb into the cover. Morrison is eliminated. Ladies and gentlemen, it's down to Jushin Thunder Liger and Will Ospreay. But now Ospreay is right behind Liger. What does Ospreay have in mind? Ospreay going for what? Jumping off the cage. Super Mega Os Cutter. Os Cutter to Liger. Liger had no idea Ospreay was behind him. And Ospreay picks up the victory. What a way to start off a GCW Lockdown as Osprey retains the Cruiserweight Championship. But Jushin Liger had no idea he was being stalked by Will Osprey. Uh, after hitting that Liger bump to take out John Morrison. But can you really blame Will Osprey in a five-way cage match? I don't know. He has to do whatever it takes to retain the championship. But what a performance by Jushin Liger eliminating both Meta League and Morrison. So I would say we, this is definitely not the last time we've seen Jushin Thunder Liger in the Cruiserweight Championship division here. But what I want to get into next is the next matchup we have on this card. And we're going to be having a six-man tag team match. Seth Rollins is going to team up with his disciples for the first time ever against Keith Lee, John Moxley, and Finn Balor in a six-man tag team match. Really excited to see how this one goes. And it is next.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. GCW Lockdown 2020. And now we're going to get into our six-man tag team match. Seth Rollins and his disciples are going to team up against the team of Keith Lee, John Moxley, and Finn Balor. And Seth Rollins and Keith Lee have been pretty much feuding all year here in GCW. It all started at GCW WrestleMania 8 when Keith Lee was so close to winning the Intercontinental Championship in that ladder match, JTM jumped up from commentary, realigned with Seth Rollins, and uh, pretty much won Rollins the Intercontinental Championship. And then last pay-per-view at Money in the Bank, Rollins added Viscera to his disciples costing Keith Lee yet another opportunity at the Intercontinental Championship here in GCW. And tonight, but oh my God, Keith Lee! There's Keith Lee! He's going right after, oh my God, what a forearm to trademark. And Rollins just standing there and staring at Keith Lee, who obviously is very, very mad at Viscera for costing him the Intercontinental Championship and money in the bank. And I want a right hand here by the big man Viscera. And I would just Viscera have in mind with Lee, but Lee getting a hold of Viscera. And look at the strength, sending him right into the ring apron and a huge chop for good measures. And now Lee, what does he have in mind? Lee gets up to the ring apron and no, Lee, you cannot do that. Lee with the senton, but oh no. Viscera moves out of the way. And oh, Viscera runs, oh my god, through the barricade. He sends Keith Lee. But oh, John Moxley's out here now. As I guess we're starting the matchup. But oh, trademark super kick helping Seth. And oh, Finn Balor is here too. Shotgun drop kick sending. Trademark right into uh, Rollins and now Balor sending Rollins into the ring here finally so I think we can get the matchup the Yes, we can start the matchup officially. Oh my god by Rollins immediately with the kick to the midsection now elbow to the back of the head Rollins going into the ropes, but there's Balor drop kick sending Rollins to the outside And oh, there's John Moxley. He's gonna go for a suicide dive, but out midair. The big man Viscera catches him and dumps Moxley straight into the barricade. What a counter by Viscera saving his his Messiah and Seth Rollins. And now trademark and Rollins you working on Balor together. Huge foot stomp to the midsection. And Keith Lee on the outside now uh, recovering, getting back to his senses and trademark Seastead going for the huge dive, but oh, Lee, look at the strength, catching trademark and power bombing him right into Viscera. Now Rollins distracted by that and Balor is going to take advantage. Yes, what a maneuver by Balor. And now it might be time to tag in Keith Lee so he finally can get his revenge against the Messiah. Seth Rollins, here comes Lee, oh my God, what a pounce, turning Rollins inside out. And now Rollins, oh, Enzo Geary to the back of the head. Now he's checking on his disciples who are all out, which is bad for Rollins as Lee goes for a gigantic lariat. And now he might finally be able to finish what he started with Rollins. But oh, Viscera back up. And oh, Viscera with a lariat to Lee. But there comes Moxley chopping down the leg of the big man. Foot stop. Oh my god. Nicely done by Balor. But oh, from behind comes Trademark taking Balor on his shoulders. And oh my god, drops him right on his head. And uh, it's John Moxley though waiting for Trademark going for the soup. Lex slam it and connects. Super kick by Rollins. And now Viscera 
Going after Moxley, and I think he wants to go for that vicious Samoan drop. But oh, Moxley, tornado DDT. But now Rollins picking up Moxley, going for the buckle moment that connects as well. But from the other side, Lee, oh my god, cross body. Move after move here. And now Lee, oh, what a super kick to trademark. And now he just has to finish off the Messiah, something that Lee has been wanting to do ever since, but oh, Viscera, right hand, miss, mid kick by Rollins, and now Trademark and Rollins looking at each other, stomp, double foot stomp combination, what a combination, and Rollins got Lee's number once again, Seth Rollins and his disciples win the six man tag. What a win for Rollins and his disciples, ladies and gentlemen. This was huge and now Rollins might finally have a claim to move on from Keith Lee as we're preparing for our next matchup here on tonight's card. Who could the Emperor be, ladies and gentlemen, as we're getting ready here for Walter's debut match. Shane McMahon's personal signing here to GCW Live, and he wanted to show us how impressive Walter is by putting him against the giant from India, the great Kali, for the first time ever here in GCW. And I am personally very excited to see Walter in action here. I've been a fan of Walter for a long time. Both of us obviously from Europe. And Walter is one of the hardest hitters uh, that there is in professional wrestling. And now we finally have him here in GCW. And I'm so excited to see what he can do. And obviously this is a huge test for Walter as well. A win over the great Kali would obviously start his career here in GCW off to a well start. And you gotta wonder what would Walter do afterwards? Is Walter going to go into the title picture? Obviously Shane McMahon seems to be very, very keen on Walter. So that might help Walter as well getting a title shot here in the near future in GCW. But like I said, what he needs to do first is to win tonight's matchup. And here, ladies and gentlemen, comes the giant from India, the great Kali. One of the tallest wrestlers to ever step inside a ring. And this just shows you how much faith Shane McMahon has in Walter to choose the great Kali as his very first opponent here. Obviously not an easy task to beat this gigantic behemoth. And I'm very excited to see how Walter does against him here tonight. And just look at this size, size difference, even though Walter is a really tall guy. Look at how tall Kali is as we ring the bell. My God, what a monster as Kali goes for a, a chop there. And whoa, Walter, now with a chop, another chop. And Walter going for third, one third chop. And it sends Kali flying to the outside. My God. 
and a Walter going to the outside and a huge Lariat taking down Kali on the floor. And now Walter going right after Kali, sending him back to the ring. And now what does he have in mind here? I think he's thinking German suplex, which could be difficult on Kali. Yes, elbow by Kali. Another elbow right to the head. And now he's going to go for that chopping. Oh my god! Walter blocks it and Walter chops the hell out of Kali again. Now going into the ropes, Walter shotgun dropkick. Taking Kali off his feet. And now Walter with the boot right to the face. And now what is he doing? Oh my god, right into that, into that sleeper hold. Sleeper hold. And is he going to choke out the great Kali here? Kali is falling. I, I feel like he's fading. The referee checking. And yes, Kali is out. Walter choked out Kali in record timing. My goodness. I would have not expected this match to be over this quickly in the favor of Walter. But how impressive was this choking out Kali in just a few minutes here. Ladies and gentlemen, he putting on his coat and walking back as nothing happened. What a debut for Walter as we're getting ready for our next lockdown cage match. Mr. Money in the Bank against Cedric Alexander. Could 2020 be the year of Jeff Hardy? in GCW. So far, it's definitely looking like it as Jeff Hardy is making his first entrance here as Mr. Money in the Bank. He won the Money in the Bank ladder match at our last pay-per-view. And now Jeff Hardy is guaranteed a GCW championship shot anytime, anywhere. Jeff Hardy this year turned his back on the fans, turned his back on his peers. But Jeff Hardy is finally in the winning track and this is where he wants to be. And this is definitely a brand new Jeff Hardy we're seeing here. But the results speak very, very clearly. Jeff Hardy beat The Undertaker at GCW WrestleMania 8 then went on to win the Money in the Bank ladder match, which is huge. And now here tonight, Jeff Hardy has a challenge in Cedric Alexander. The Hardys and Alexander have been going at it for quite some time now, ever since the Hardys pretty much injured Ricochet with those two steel chairs and, and Money in the Bank. The Hardys were going at it with Alexander very, very hard. And uh, Jeff Hardy was able to throw Alexander off that huge ladder, pretty much nearly ended his career. But luckily for Cedric, it wasn't the case. And tonight, Cedric is looking for revenge and it's going to be inside of the lockdown steel cage structure. And what would a win for Cedric Alexander mean here tonight. I think it could be huge. He is going against the Mr. Money in the Bank. If Alexander wins, maybe he even has a case for a match for the Money in the Bank briefcase against Jeff Hardy. And that would be huge. Obviously, Cedric was very close to winning the Money in the Bank ladder match itself. Came a little bit short, but had one of the best breakout. Oh my God, Jeff Hardy! Jeff Hardy immediately going after Cedric Alexander with the Money in the Bank briefcase. The referee is not happy with it, but Hardy is telling him, this is a lockdown cage match. The door closed. I'm going to go after him. You better ring the bell. And Jeff Hardy is bringing in those chairs. And I can only imagine Hardy wants to get revenge for what Alexander did to him at Money in the Bank when he had that huge Mishinoko driver off the apron 
onto that steel chair. That was very, very brutal at Money in the Bank. And now Jeff Hardy, what is he thinking? Gigantic front slam, sending Alexander stomach first into the chairs, right into the cover. But our Alexander able to kick out. And this is definitely the new Jeff Hardy going after Alexander immediately. Now wants to follow up with Twist of Hate. Alexander counters Lombard check, but oh no, Hardy lands on his feet, going for the punch. Alexander docks a huge end Giri to the back of the head. Now Alexander going for the Mishinoko driver. Hardy going into the inverted Twist of Hate. Counter again, Poison Rana, no. Hardy turns it around and oh my god. That falling power bomb into the steel chairs again, sending Cedric Alexander again, stomach first into those chairs. And that could be very, very fatal for Alexander in this matchup as Hardy comes with the chair. And oh my god, Alexander out of the way to bicycle kick. Hardy falling into the chair. What is Alexander thinking? Gigantic moonsault onto Hardy. Nicely done by Cedric here. But obviously his stomach is still hurting from being dropped on those chairs there. But now Alexander is going to the outside thinking to get something. And he has a huge ladder. And now what is he thinking? Going for that flat line. Oh my god, Hardy face first into the ladder. But it also hurt Alexander. And now Cedric Alexander somehow gotta, gotta follow that up with something. He takes the ladder and now puts it in between the ring and the cage. I get... JTM versus Daniel Bryan vibes from Armageddon in the Hell in a Cell as he goes for the oh my god no Hardy gets out of the Death Valley driver into the ladder and now Hardy is, is taking Alexander putting him in between the ropes and the ladder now what is does Hardy have in mind this can't be good but Alexander Flips out of it very nicely. There comes Hardy, but Alexander counters into the Falcon Arrow. Nicely done by Alexander. And now Alexander got Hardy where he wants him. But oh my god, Jeff Hardy. Low blow, low blow. And it is completely legal in a lockdown cage match. And this is something the old Jeff Hardy would have never done. Turning the match around and out. Throwing Alexander into that ladder and what a bad, bad landing for Cedric Alexander as Hardy is setting up the ladder there in the corner, similar position to what Alexander fell on at Money in the Bank as Hardy's pounding on the head of Cedric here. And now Hardy, what is he thinking? What's to send Cedric face first, but he blocks. Oh, nice, nice elbow by Alexander. And now, oh, he's going for the lumber check. Lumber check by Al Hardy, rescuing himself onto that ladder. It's a swanton bomb. What a counter. He into the cover now. But our Alexander out of, at two. But what a smart maneuver that was by Hardy, avoiding the lumber check by Alexander. And now Hardy is getting a table into the mix here. And what does he have in mind with this? This, this can't be good. Now he is setting up Cedric Alexander on that ladder. And I think he's thinking he wants to go for the twist of hate perhaps but alexander counters mishinoko driver off of the ladder and now cedric turned this match around once again putting hardy onto the table and he's looking up at that cage i think alexander is going for a huge cage dive ladies and gentlemen and this would be it this would beat Jeff Hardy here tonight. 
But our Hardy's backup got the lack of Alexander. Very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. And you know what d does Hardy have in mind? He got Alexander locked in the cage. No, he's going for that twist of hate. Twist of hate off the cage through the table. My God, this is it. Alexander is done for, ladies and gentlemen. Let We have to look at the replay for this. Just look at this twist of hate off the cage. My goodness. And Jeff Hardy has Cedric Alexander down into the cover. By Hardy pulling Alexander back up. I think he wants to mock Alexander or or do even worse things to him. Yes, I think. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I, I think I know exactly what he's thinking. He cannot do this. Oh my god! Twist of hate into the metal steel leg of that table. He completely destroyed Alexander into the cover. And this is it. Hardy picks up the victory. And Hardy again very, very dominating here. And this time without any help of his brother, Matt Hardy. Now coming into the ring congratulating Jeff. But Jeff did it all by himself here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot take that away from Jeff Hardy. First of all, I didn't sell out, I sold in. And popularity doesn't mean a damn thing to me. Oh my god! The Undertaker! The Undertaker is back! Huge big boom going after Matt Hardy! The Undertaker is back for revenge! Going after Jeff Hardy, going for the choke slam, but oh no, there's Matt, and there's the two on one. Once again, the Hardy's going after the Undertaker. No. Wow. What is this? I think, ladies and gentlemen, it's the. Can it be the brother of the Undertaker? We haven't seen Kane in GCW since WrestleMania 3. This is five years ago, could it be? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's the big red machine, the brother of The Undertaker. It's Kane and the Hardys are fleeing, fleeing on the top of the cage as Kane is there with his brother in the ring. And now Kane is the equalizer. The Undertaker is back. Kane is back, the Hardys are in trouble ladies and gentlemen what a surprise we have just witnessed here at gcw lockdown the return of the undertaker and kane the brothers of destruction are coming for the hardy boys very very excited about that but now we're getting into our next match of this evening it's going to be the gcw Tag Team Championships, the huge gauntlet match. The Broserweights have to defend their championships against four other teams here tonight. And this whole situation got started at GCW Money in the Bank when the Broserweights put the titles on the line against Cena and Orton and a frenzy of tag teams came running down to the ring in the end causing a disqualification making the Brozoweights retain but as it looks like tonight the Brozoweights have to start off as team number one which is a huge disadvantage here tonight for the tag team champions and uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen I'm just getting info that something is wrong the, the Brozoweights don't seem to be here 
I kind of have to find out what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. So what I hear is that we are going backstage. Oh no, what did they do to the Broser weights? Oh no, they kidnapped Big Head Earl as well! What is going on? It seems like they're in some sort of a parking area here in the arena. And they want to have the tag title match there. I'm just waiting for info from, from backstage, from management, if the match is on or not. And I'm hearing that we have to go ahead with the match. Where we have advertised the tag title match, so we have to go with it. It's gonna be in the in the parking lot. Cena and Orton against the Broserweights, and and it seems to be starting right now. And there comes Riddle going after Cena immediately with the knee. And now the fight is breaking out here in the parking lot. Riddle now going for the. Set Todd, oh my god, but Cena out of the way. And Riddle obviously hurt us back there. Now Cena on top of the car as well. Going for the attitude adjustment. Riddle counters. What is Riddle doing? Oh my god! German suplex onto the car by Riddle. And where are Orton and, and John are up on that garbage truck? I think this is John Moxley's garbage truck. That, that we have backstage here and Orton and Dunn are fighting on it backdrop no Dunn able to land on his on his feet very important nice forearm by Dunn stunning Orton and now following it up with a huge super kick nicely done by the Broser weight and now what is he thinking what is Pete Dunn thinking sunset flip power bomb onto these guardrails my god my god he just completely destroyed Randy Orton. Sunset flip power bump onto the guardrails we have out there. And now Cena and Riddle going at it again. And Riddle with a nice kick. And now what is Riddle thinking? I think he's going to go for a suplex through that spare announcer's table. But no, Cena counters it and suplexes Riddle onto the wooden pallets there. And Pete Dunn getting back to his feet, checking out on his partner there, but Cena immediately going after Dunn, going for a catapult into the cage there, but Dunn able to counter, climbing up the cage. What a view Dunn has there, oh my god, Moonsault! And Cena and Dunn are down, but what a nice counter by Pete Dunn, but obviously, this parking lot is not is not made to wrestle. This is not an environment to wrestle. Like every bump you take is going to be fatal as Randy Orton comes, counters RKO onto the car, completely taking out Dunn. But on the other side, Mad Riddle with the knee to Cena, taking Cena out. And now Riddle coming, running after Orton, but Orton counters power slam onto the car. Oh my god, the, these two teams are destroying each other out here, ladies and gentlemen. Now Randy Orton going for the backdrop onto the table, but oh, Riddle lands on his feet, knee strike again. And now Orton finds himself on the table, and Mad Riddle sees a ladder and now Riddle is climbing up the ladder look how high up Mad Riddle is ladies and gentlemen and I think he's gonna go for the flow tank bro oh my god or out of the way and Riddle crashes through that announcer's table, our spare announcer's table. We have backstage and what is Orton doing? No, no, punt, punt, Orton just punt kick. He done something and he tried it money in the bank. But oh look at oh no. This doesn't look good at all. And and what why are they doing more stuff 
to be done. This is this is not necessary attitude RKO onto the concrete. My God, they completely destroyed Pete Dunne. Gordon into the cover, and we have new GCW Tag Team Champions. My goodness, what a parking lot fight we have here, ladies and gentlemen. And we have new GCW Tag Team Champions. What a turn of events. And what is this? Orton and Cena have the escape car right there. It, it kind of feels like a coup they did here tonight for the tag titles. New GCW Tag Team Champions, Randy Orton and John Cena are driving off. What a turn of events, ladies and gentlemen. I still can't really comprehend what happened here. We expected a gauntlet tag title match and it turned into a uh, insane backstage brawl for the tag titles and we have new tag champions as well. We have to see how that all uh, gets followed up on GCW Live. But now we're getting ready for our main event here tonight, the rematch from GCW WrestleMania 8. Brock Lesnar against Kenny Omega for the GCW Championship, but this time it's going to be in the lockdown steel cage structure. Tonight, after WrestleMania 8, it's the return of the best bout machine. It's the return of Kenny Omega. And Omega tonight is looking to reclaim the GCW championship that he has lost to Brock Lesnar at GCW WrestleMania 8 in that match actually being the first time that Omega was pinned in a GCW ring after Brock Lesnar pretty much nearly caved in his skull with Lesnar's elbow. Since then, GCW has forbidden Lesnar the use of that vicious elbow strike having put Omega and Jericho on the bench for a long time and tonight these two will be fighting inside the lockdown cage structure. Kenny Omega is looking to get revenge and he's looking to reclaim his GCW championship. And here ladies and gentlemen comes the GCW champion Brock Lesnar. He is here, but you can see that um, right elbow of Lesnar has some protection on it. This is uh, from what happened in the first blood match Lesnar had with Moxley at Money in the Bank. And you gotta wonder, is that elbow going to play a factor here tonight in the lockdown cage match? And, oh, Heyman, is that really necessary? Sending Big Head Earl here again into the into the cage. Not a great night for Big Head Earl, but we're getting ready for our GCW Championship match here inside the lockdown cage. I'm hyped up. Who's going to walk out with the championship? And you can never forget that Jeff Hardy is lurking somewhere with the Money in the Bank briefcase as well. After a hard fought cage match, will Hardy look to come out again and uh, cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase? We'll have to see as how Omega goes right after that elbow. And oh my god, he goes straight for the dragon suplex. And oh my god, he kicks the 
elbow again. And what is Omega doing? Poison Rana. Omega right out of the gate taking down Lesnar. And Omega with the V-Trigger right to the side of the head. Now into the cover. But our Lesnar is out at two. What a start here by Kenny Omega as he continuously goes for the uh, bad arm, bad elbow of Lesnar. Maybe John Moxley helped out Kenny Omega to win the GCW Championship here tonight. And Omega now with a huge boot to Lesnar. Now going into the rope. What is Omega looking for? Oh my God! Sending Lesnar straight into the cage wall. And this is not the Brock Lesnar that we know of, ladies and gentlemen, as Kenny Omega, oh my god, sends him right into the cage wall. Again with that drop kick. That elbow is seriously hindering Lesnar. I'm going to say it. And oh, there comes Omega with the boots onto the outside while Lesnar able to move out of the way. Omega trying to get back. Oh my god, what a knee by Lesnar. And oh, hilarious by Lesnar. And, and immediately looking, holding that elbow, ladies and gentlemen. This cannot be good for Lesnar. As he probably has to figure out a way to keep Omega down here. Another uh, knee strike by Lesnar here. And Omega, oh, a hold off the arm. Snaps it over the rope. And just like that, Omega turned the match around once again. And he's all the way up on the cage. And oh my god, what a drop kick to the back of the head from the cage. Now what is Omega thinking? He might already be thinking to go for the one-winged angel. One-winged angel position. Lesnar able to get out. Going for the German suplex. But oh, Omega again for the arm. Breaks up the German suplex. Going for the V trigger. But oh, Lesnar. Lesnar caught him. Power bomb into the cage. No, Omega counter sunset flip. What is Omega going for? Got him in position for the Tiger Driver 98. Drops Lesnar right on the top of his head. And Paul Heyman, ladies and gentlemen, seems concerned. And he should be. This match is not looking good for Brock Lesnar. As Omega going into the ropes, going for the V trigger. Oh my god, Lesnar. And turns him inside out with the Lariat and another German suplex. Drops Omega on his neck. F5, F5, Lesnar into the cover. But oh my god, Omega kicks out at two. And you could really see. Oh, 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 oh. Lesnar, no. He, yeah, the referee goes uh, between these two immediately because Lesnar is not allowed to use the elbow. And um, I don't know what management would do if he did, but Omega turns this whole thing into a cross armbar and Lesnar might be in serious trouble. This is the bad elbow. You can see the expression on his face. Lesnar is struggling. Lesnar is in agony here, ladies and gentlemen, as Omega got the arm lock tight, tight. And Lesnar is trying to somehow find a way out of it but it is in very tight. But now Lesnar gets up. Oh my God. And he, he turns it into a, a variation of the Bronk Lock. We haven't seen that in a long time by Lesnar. And oh, how smart by Lesnar. Turning that right into an F5. But Omega counters. Got him by the bad arm again. Omega. Red card. Oh my God. Lesnar falling down. And Omega. Thinking to go for another one. Another V trigger, ladies and gentlemen. No. Lesnar out of the way. Going for the German suplex. But oh, Omega lands on his feet. V trigger, no. Out of the way. Lesnar going for the German suplex. And this time it goes through. And now, what is Lesnar thinking? F5. F5. Can he do it? Can Brock Lesnar do it? Counter by Omega into the suplex, onto the knee. But oh no. Lesnar turns it around into the submission. But oh, Omega this time rolls out of it nicely. Transitioning into the, into the Snapdragon suplex. And now, Lesnar is rolling to the outside. Omega V trigger. Lesnar catches him. Belly to belly suplex. But oh, Omega able to get himself out of trouble there. Now Lesnar is climbing the cage wall getting Omega. Oh no. Oh no. He cannot go for the German suplex from up there. 
We've seen a top rope German suplex at WrestleMania, but nothing like this. Look at how the cage is shaking, ladies and gentlemen. Lesnar wants to destroy Omega with a German suplex from the cage. And oh my God, oh my God, he did it. And Omega landed right on the back of his head. And, and Lesnar also landed bad, ladies and gentlemen. And the referee is checking on them. And, and Heyman wants to get in there. There's Cody, who's obviously c concerned for uh, his uh, fellow Bullet Club member. But oh, Lesnar is now getting back up while Omega is still laying there lifeless. And oh, oh, Lesnar is picking up the lifeless body of Omega as this necessary German suplex. But Omega played possum. B trigger, B trigger to the back of the head. Kenny got him, Kenny got him. One wig angel. It's gonna go through Lesnar. What is Lesnar doing? Small package into the cover. And Lesnar, Lesnar retains. Lesnar retains the GCW Championship via small package, ladies and gentlemen. Something that I would have never thought I'd see from Brock Lesnar, but he just retained the GCW Championship. But oh, Lesnar is really, really, really hurt. You can see the elbow. Lesnar is mad. Yeah, Lesnar is mad. Like, Heyman said that Lesnar should not have put the title on the line here tonight, but it's a pay-per-view. The championship gotta be on the line. And this is it here tonight from GCW Lockdown. We will be back with all the fallout here on the channel very soon. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you all on GCW Live.